Okay, good morning, good morning. Yeah, yeah, no, here I am. Testing, testing, yep, we're up and running. Nine minutes and 45 seconds late. Sorry about this, guys. <laughs> Never live it down. So what's my excuse? You can blame it on Count Basie. <laughs> I've been sitting here. I've been here since 6.30, sitting here Stream time, eight o'clock, lots of time. I'm chopping prints, chopping prints. Got Count Basie on, cranked up. I just didn't notice the time. <laughs> it's so cute. I've, I've been, I'm the trimmer this time around. We've got the prints. This is the second batch of prints for November. And I'm the trimmer. Someone says, if you're talking, we can't hear you. I think it's okay, right? I'm live, live, live. It's right, the show. No sound. Audio's good. Okay, okay, okay. I've been here. I've been here since 6.30. Just sitting at the bench here. I'm the chopper today. This is the November print batch. We're not supposed to show them, but here, here we are. It's, of course, the famous Tokaido He's a kurige, and my job, let me just do one while you can see, before we get to our normal stream stuff. This won't be my work on the stream because I'm nearly finished, but just let me do one so you can see what's going on. Hang on a sec. They came back from Ishikawa-san today in this format, the full eight prints. We're doing eight this month. They get chopped in half first. And we've got two guides on the bench because the, the first print has a bit wider margin than the other prints. So the first print gets a wider margin cut and then popular is this subject in modern reproductions? Not really. It's pretty much finished. And in fact, as I've learned while we were doing this, uh, young Japanese people these days don't even know what this story is. So a generation or a couple of generations ago, it was something that was still part of popular culture, but it is no longer any way part of popular culture. And then most people, as I said, they just, nobody knows what this is. So... Uh, So there she goes. They're all up and they're all packed. So let me put this away. I've got a bunch more to do still, but there's no point doing this on the stream. Let's do some actual carving work. But I just forgot. I was sitting here trimming away, getting ready for the stream, and then just trimmed and trimmed, and Count Basie was playing, and uh, there we were. John's back, I see. I hope he's been giving you stories about Australia while we've been waiting. Count Basie, the kid from Red Bank album. I heard him, you know, he came to Vancouver in the 1970s. He played at the Commodore. It was a great, great, great concert. I remember it. I, at that time, I was playing baritone sax in a rehearsal band, the BCIT rehearsal band. I was the baritone sax player. So when Basie came to town, my God, we all headed down there. It was a great show. It was towards the end of his career, so it probably wasn't the best Basie band that he'd ever had, but it was good. Butch Miles was on drums. It was just fantastic. It was fantastic. That was the one part. <laughs> the bass player. It wasn't the electric bass in those days. He was still up on uh, the reason to bass player with an actual string bass. And I guess the Commodore stage on the Commodore ballroom was kind of tight. I don't know what the background was, but he fell off the back of the stage. And Basie's out front with the, with the piano, and the, the guys are doing the stuff, and the, up at the back there, the bass player disappears. And from where we were at our table, this wasn't a sitting down concert, it was tables and drinks and stuff like this while we were looking up. And from where we could see the stage, we could see the guy had fallen off, and he's on his back with the bass on top of him, and he's kicking his legs, and it was just like a beetle. You know, you see a beetle turned upside down. <laughs> 
and Basie looks over and he's doing his stuff on the piano and he looks at us like in a slow motion and grins and he 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 here we go <laughs> and the guy struggles back to life it'd be 19 I don't know I don't know 1973 74 somewhere around there Here they are, ready to go out. The first batch is already in Ome because they're leaving tomorrow. This is the second batch. Let me get them safely stashed here somewhere. Okay. Okay, we have work to do today. We will be carving. We will be carving on uh, the surfer block. No, no. Before that, I have another job. Oh, yes. We will get to the surfer block, but I will be finishing up the carving on one of these Matsushima blocks. Who's this? Timothy Shepard. Paper is out. Yes, two people. Ishikawa san is upstairs, or she will be coming soon. She'll be poking her nose in the door. She's coming upstairs to print some more of these he's a good gay prints and ayumi san is coming and she wants this block and if i don't have this finished by the time she gets here i am in trouble it's one of the matsushima blocks which we have recut and recarved and she wanted a new block for this and i said i'd do it over the weekend and i haven't got it finished yet and she wants this this morning Also, happy birthday to somebody today. Maybe you've already been talking about it. I don't know. Somebody important to us. Happy birthday. Any guesses? Not me. Not me. Not me. Mine's next month. John's got it. It's Hokusai's alleged birthday today. And this afternoon, we are going to head over, this morning maybe, that we're going to head over to, to his grave and say hello. There is so much going on here, you know. I don't even know what day it is. I don't even know what day it is. The preparation for next year's series. How do you say series in plural? Series. The preparation for next year's series is full speed ahead. The shop is fairly busy. Online is nuts still. Subscriptions are nuts. Subscriptions still coming in. New staff training. Just, it is nuts. It is nuts. Tom got it first. Okay, share the egg or take two eggs. I say allegedly happy birthday because of uh, there's two things. They're really not sure when his birthday is. The, the researchers have come up with two likely candidates. And as we talked about the other day, we talked about it on the stream, the fact that the dates, calendars have changed in the intervening years. So it makes no sense to try and pin down an actual day. Also, I don't know the number. How old is Hokusai today? Can somebody look, up, look that up on Wikipedia, please? I think his birth date is probably known. So how old is he today? Bob Ross two days ago. Look at this. Wow. Born 1849, so he's 262. Will I go to his grave live? No, a couple of people have asked about that. I just don't actually at the moment, I'm sorry, I don't have the technical capabilities to do that. I'm streaming right now from an actual laptop which is plugged into the wall and plugged into our internet here. This laptop doesn't have cellular and I'm not really comfortable with going over there to the graveyard taking some cables, setting up the laptop on somebody else's grave, getting our camera ready with a tripod, figuring out a Wi-Fi. 
I'm really not comfortable with doing that. We shouldn't be mucking around that much. So if I had a phone set up, we could do it quietly and surreptitiously or, or at least uh, respectfully, but I don't have that set up. So no, I'm sorry. We're going to take a video camera over there and we'll do video a little bit of it. And I'll show it to you when we come back later. Well, there's also, I'm, I'm saying we're going to go over the video camera, but it might be possible. Today was probably going to be busy at that temple. I'm not the only guy in town who has been thinking about Hokusai. There are various things like uh, Ukiwe Appreciation Societies, and there's probably a Hokusai fan club or something. I don't know. Researchers, it may be quite crowded over there at that temple today. So we can't just barge in and make ourselves at home and uh, we may have to actually just get in line. Yeah, you went to the stream that one time, but that was static. I, I was plugged in. I don't have a setup to walk around town. I'm sorry. I know it's possible, but I just I don't have that setup. And there's really, there's not much to see. Hokusai's grave is a pretty nondescript little grave. It's a quiet little thing. It's not actually, uh, it's not some spectacular memorial to Hokusai. It's a very, very quiet little, a bit of a broken stone. It fell down in one of the earthquakes earlier. It's cracked. It got glued back together. Okay, show and tell today. We have an interesting show and tell today. We're not we're not talking about you know, blow your socks or something out of the water or whatever. It'll be a, it'll be a quiet show and tell. We have two prints to show, and we also have some backup information to show. And I don't is Jacques here today? Jacques Commandeur today. We are going to link to a page on Jacques Commandeur's website today, and show a couple of prints. So if Jacques is here today. Speak up, sir, because we're going to use some of your expertise today. In fact, I can link to it now. Let me let me look in the background here and get a link ready for show and tell. There will be a link we will need at show and tell time. Let me paste it in here. Here's a link from Jacques Commandeur's website that we will be using at show and tell time later. Jacques has a spectacular print collection. It's, it's, uh, it's uh, what can I say? It's not massive in quantity, it is spectacular in quality. Jacques has done the same thing with his print collection that Dave did with his stamp collection many, many years ago. We've talked about this. Rather than go for an accumulation and a lot of stuff, Jacques specifically tried to focus on one particular type of print and spent years and years and years hunting for the best examples of prints in that genre. And he's done so very, very well. And he has a, it's a world-class, small collection of world, world-class items of a specific genre. And there's a bunch of them on that page. There's some spectacular, and they are albums. Most of the prints on that page are not single prints. They are actually albums. And Jacques has a world-class collection of those things. I am green with envy. So what we have today at the show and tell is related to that. We haven't got, I, I'm not going to open up some spectacular album, but I can, I can just tell you, we have received a couple of prints on an auction that are il illustrated on Jock's page, and we're going to have a nice close-up look at them. They are items for the flea market. They will be going over to Watanabe-san to put in the flea market. 
Oh, and before that, when we get down to that time, show and tell time, please remind me, I have another package that I have to open for you. There's too much to do today. What time is it? 8.24. I think we're okay. Somebody's asking, what am I doing? You know, what's the purpose of carving this board? Actually, there's a really easy way to show you. We're making woodblock prints. And if you can see, we're really lucky at the moment. We're right at the point where you can see what's going on. Do you see the shape here? It looks like a temple roof. We're carving away all the other wood and we're leaving a temple roof. This is a woodblock print. This is a sample of the finished product that we're making with this board and others. And can you see here, there is a red temple and it has a gray roof. And what we're carving here is the wood block that will print the gray roof on the next version of this wood block print. There's also an area here on the sail. Do you see the sail with the zigzag zigzag? See the gray tone here on this sail with the zigzag zigzag? That's what we're carving here. There's a boat here. It's going to be the same tone as the sail. We have the sail here, but there's no tone on the boat. It's missing. So this was our proof copy, and it turned out that Dave had screwed up and he had forgotten to include the boat area on this block. So back out come the tools, and we're going to go with plan B. We're going to carve it again with the sail, and this time not forgetting the boat. The print is turning out kind of nice. This is Ayumi-san's proof copy. This is the new Mokohankan version of the famous Matsushima print. And it's coming along very, very, very nicely. How many blocks will the final picture use? It's about 15 or 16. I'm sorry, I don't remember exactly. Yes, as Jaws pointed out, it's, it's red here on this block that I'm carving, but that's simply for contrast so that I can see it. This one is going to be gray. Other blocks will be different colors. The red you see here is no connection with the color in the finished print. This piece of wood is really hard. There's a knot right in the middle. We didn't use it for the outside because we, we couldn't get uh, a good smooth color area. But for this little area of gray, it doesn't matter at all that it's not a prime piece of wood. But because of the knot nearby, it's rock hard here. Oh, news, news, news. There's ninja news, actually. I meant to, to talk about this. There's big, big news from ninja. Ninja have been here now, the ninja across the street have been here for a year. They opened in uh, mid-October something last year, and they've now been there a year. And uh, I didn't know, but they had been planning some big changes, and yesterday the changes came into effect. There are new staff members over there. There were two new faces that we saw. And the drama that plays outside was done yesterday by the, new, by the new guys. And it's a little bit different drama than previous. They've adapted it and amended it a little bit. And it's two new guys that were doing it. So they weren't actually super self-conscious about this. I had seen them practicing last week. and wasn't sure what's going on. From my window upstairs one evening, 
I heard outside, this is 9, 9.30 at night, I heard the I thought, the ninja are doing this thing at night? So I look out the window, I know, and it's training. The two guys who previously did the drama are training two new guys. And they're going through the whole thing, they're going through the script and how to lift your arm up and where to stab with the plastic sword. And they're like, they're practicing for a, for a movie fight. They go back and do it again and then do it again. And they got marks on the sidewalk, stab here, lift your arm up and now flip you over my arm. They've rehearsed the actual fight. So I saw the two new guys training and bingo, they came into, into action yesterday. And they've changed the drama a little bit. And at the point now, there's, there's two guys in the drama and there's two bad guys now. And I don't know if this is going to be all the time or if that was just for the weekend because they had a big, big crowd of kids. They had like 12, 10, 12, 13 kids in the audience, in the group at the same time. So the bad guy is doing the thing. The new bad guy is doing the thing with the new ninja teacher. And then rappelling into the middle of the fight came another bad guy to back up his friend. They've escalated this thing. <laughs> so it's crazy. So all of us who normally don't pay attention to this, because we've seen this now so many times, I'm out there, what's going on, what's going on, what's going on? It was crazy fun, crazy busy. And part of this might be related to last week, they were on TV, there was a TV crew here last week shooting them. So it could be that maybe they were on TV just like yesterday or something, or the day before, and they got a ton of reservations. So it seems their business is, has worked out. You know, I apologize for this. When they came, I, I said something like, I give these guys six months, or I forget what I actually said, but I was completely wrong. I'll admit that. They've also toned down the last scene. It, the the last scene in their drama, after the bad guy has been captured, he escapes from the group of kids. He points up to the sky, look over there, and the kids all look that way. He runs the other way. You've seen this in my video. He falls to the ground and they hack him and stab him with their knives. That part has been cut from the drama. And I can guess why. It's a little bit too aggressive out on the street in front of the bag lady and the hotel. So that part seems to have gone. So it was lucky I got that just in time. And so they're still coming down from that steel railing. Not only did the ninja guy himself come down from there during the drama a couple of times, but also towards the end of the day, once the little kids were gone home, they started you know, throwing people over the edge there. There was a bunch of customers. Look at that, I've stabbed myself. Did you notice? How did I do that? Where did I do that? Excuse me. There's an extra red color on the block here. Piece of tape, where's a piece of tape? So they started throwing guys off the roof there. And they had, they had them lined up. Didn't Dave say they were opening a second ninja place? I don't know about that. I don't remember that. These guys are kind of the second ninja place. They all came here from the Ninja Muda over in Nikko. A couple of the guys here who started this business they used to work at the Ninja Muda over there, and they came here to do this.
<laughs> what if you clipped me cutting myself? <laughs> what if? What did I do? Was it? I didn't even notice actually. Was it one of those things where I swiped like this and hit the knife? I don't remember. <laughs> I'll have to watch the clip later. I don't know. So, somebody's clipped it. Oh, great. Thanks a lot. That'll be the only thing that survives after I'm dead. <laughs> it's a stroke from the ninja. They heard me talking about them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like that when I pick this up and wipe and I pick it up and wipe if I don't get it quite, you know, back enough, then that's it. I tap the edge of the blade there. So, and these are these are sharp little tools. So, I just think once upon a time, back when the in the early days of this Twitch channel, I don't remember when. It might actually have been during the long three-hour stream, the one we did with Cameron, where I made that print start to finish. There was something like that. I had been doing something, and I actually tipped the knife, and I did the same thing. I just poked myself, and I got a bit of red blood on the block. But I, at that time, I was like, I can't let these people see that. So I think I put my finger on it or something to cover it up, and then rolled the little bit of cut finger. I rolled it back under, and I sort of wiped and something, and I tried to keep that out of sight, and I did the rest of it. I think for the rest of the rest of that segment, I had my finger rolled under so nobody could see. It. So I was trying to. Uh, oh my God! I can't let him see I cut my finger. I'm actually mortal. <laughs> Whatever. So. There is a thing like that back there somewhere in all of our Twitch streams. I don't remember where it is. You know. Succession planning at Mokohaka. <laughs> there's, there's no succession planning. I know the, the only sort of thoughts going on in that direction. There's no succession because one, my daughters don't want to do this, and there isn't anybody else here who can run this place. As much as there's a plan, it's simply to to build the place up to a a stable. What can I say? You know. Make sure we diversify the work, have different people doing all the jobs, and build it up to a, a level where it's stable enough and can continue without me. You know, Whether or not it can without Dave's particular style of leadership, I have no idea, and it's none of my business. You know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't. It's too soon to think about it. I'm still pretty. Uh, I'm still pretty ganky. I don't plan on leaving soon, but we, we do, and we we're in the middle of it. We're getting competent people in all these different areas. We've got competent carvers, plenty of competent printers, and now in recent years, we've got competent people on the second floor in our management area. So we're bit by bit we're building to a point where I don't do all the jobs. I don't do everything, you know. As for the actual leadership, I don't know what's going to happen there. My daughter, one of my daughters keeps joking about that, that her son, my grandson, one of my grandsons, will come over here and run this business when I'm gone. But uh, that's absolutely a, a total fantasy. 
None of my grandsons are specifically interested in Japanese culture. They have their own lives over there. And the last thing any of those three boys would want to do is uh, come over and play in this in this world. So, uh, so she has this fantasy that this thing can stay in the family, but <laughs> it's not going to happen. So. Okay, I th oh no, I gotta get in the middle out of here. I was gonna say I thought I'm finished, but I'm not. I gotta get in the middle out of here. So we're talking about this before. Didn't Dave say a while back that pretty much all the old big publishers declined after the key founders died and retired? And that, that is exactly what happened through the 20th century. What Nabehanga is still there, but they're, they're a shadow of the force that they used to be. They were a stunningly strong force in the, in the field here in, in Tokyo uh, exactly 100 years ago. If you go back to 1922, and the areas, the, the first half of the 20th century, they were a stunning force. Creativity, you know, stu stupendous quality of work. What Nabehanga was the place to go. But once uh, Shozaburo-san passed away, that's it. The rest of it's just they lost the vision. They kept going. They, they, they could stay in business. But there's no more vision. There's no more creativity. There's no more whatever. There's no more, there's no more creativity happening there. You know? It's just going through the motions. Adachi was the same. The first guy who set it up, Toyohisa Adachi, was a, a genius in, in terms of setting up a workshop and choosing stuff and working out you know, how to make it happen and having a good eye and a super you know, critical you know, choices, what to do and what not to do. That was Toyohisa-san. He died uh, in the post-war period and the young man that he chose to run his business is now a very old man. He's 80 eight or 92 or something, I don't know the actual number, and the business is a shell of what it once was. And that, the Idachi thing, it's because of two things. It's because of the different visions of the man who took over, but it's also because of the fact that they chose to go with government purse strings. They chose, instead of keeping themselves completely independent, they chose to start accepting government subsidies. And that, that they kept them alive through some difficult years, but it ripped the guts out of what they were and who they were. So they lost all their own creativity and originality. Takamezawa is gone just by virtue of the, the, the younger generation didn't even know what their history was. They didn't know what to do. Yu Yu Do staggered on for a while. Oh, oh every single Doi Hanga. Once, I know, what's his name? I know, Sadaichi san. Once he was gone, his son tried to do it but just didn't have the vision. The granddaughter has got it now. She's trying to do it, but she doesn't have any idea what makes a good woodblock print. So perhaps the same thing will happen to Mokohanka. They will stagger forward, maybe just publishing, living on their legacy, or maybe someone will be around who can carry forward the vision. I don't know. I won't be here. I can't, um, I can't dictate the future. Dave Bleeds, what's this? Am I not going to hear the end of this now? If it bleeds, it leads. This is another really time when I really get cut lots. I've done this in the future. There's the kentonomi here. We're, we're filing down the gentle edges. It's cut, 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 wipe, cut, 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 wipe. And that corner right there, any number of times I've done the same thing. I've pushed this knife forward, pulled it back and wiped, and I catch the corner of that knife. So that little particular cut that you see me, the cut that I got today, is actually quite common. I've done that a bajillion times over the years. There's probably lots of times, actually, I've probably done it on stream, and as I cut, I just pinch it for a minute. And you didn't notice because I pinched it or held it underneath and did it like this. And so today's a bit unusual in that I did that same cut, but I left it open. <laughs> we, we had blood on the block, so. <laughs> okay, we are done. Ayumi-san's gonna come in the door any minute now, 9.30 or so, she'll be here, maybe during the show and tell, and she's gonna hold her hands out, and she is going to want this piece of wood, and we're done in time. We're done in time. And maybe we could have some fun. She will come in the door and she will look at me and I'll say, oh. 
It's here somewhere. Let's do that. Let's hide the block behind me here. She's going to come in and I'll say, it's here somewhere. And she will look at me and say, and I'll say, yes, it's here somewhere, but it's actually done. <laughs> so can I show the preview print one more time? This is the print we are making. We have actually two versions here. This is the print from the doy blocks that we made from the doy blocks a couple of years ago. We've been borrowing the doy blocks for years, four, five, six, seven years, I don't know. Last time we had them here, it would have been over a year ago. We thought the blocks were getting a bit funky, but we made prints with them. I think one of the blocks was really badly warped. They sunk, dunked it in water. And Amy said at that time, she told me, Dave, it's getting really, really difficult. The islands are not matching. The sea and sky are not matching. There's a split in one of the sky blocks. So she had told me, Dave, this block set, it's really going to be difficult. So what we did was, in the intervening year, we thought about it and we started carving our own set. The print itself is in the public domain, the design, because Tsuchiya Koitsu has been dead for well over 70 years. So over in the last a couple of months, we've been getting it ready. I think you, I didn't carve it, Kawasaki-san and Kobe carved it for me. But, and this is the first test print that Ayumi-san has made from our new set of blocks. And as you saw, it turned out that when I was doing color separations, I forgot part of the boat. These lines were too thin. I had to take off the mudabori. You saw me doing that. I took off the mudabori on this line. So bit by bit, we're getting, getting through. And what we've done, we're thinking about the, the market out there now. How is the world going to know which of these prints was made from the doi hunga people and which was made from us? We've done two things. This is it's still a test. There's the kento mark. There's two things we've done. What we've done is I took off the seal. In the original, the signature and the seal were carved on blocks. Fair enough. We've done the same thing. We've carved the signature, but I did not carve the seal. Because this is a reproduction version, whatever, I could have carved the seal. There's no legal thing, but I just thought it would be a good thing. If we leave the seal off our versions, and Doi Hunga will leave the seal on their versions, that will help the market easily tell when you're looking at a JPEG or looking from a distance see which one is which. We've also, it turned out, this wasn't really intentional, but it turns out that I've got some differences in the clouds. There's the original cloud. It doesn't quite touch the tree there. Somehow when I was doing my tracing, I got the cloud a bit of a funny shape and the cloud touches the tree. So there's going to be a half a dozen spots like this that you can tell which print is which. And of course, the embossing on the side will be different. The Doi Hunga puts their own embossing on the side. We have done a combined embossing. It says Asakusa Mokohankan and Doi Mokohanga together in the embossing. And our new one will drop the Doi. It will just be carved Kawasaki, printed Ayumi Ohashi, whatever. So they will have different embossings as well. But it's going to be fun. We have done a very, very nice a reproduction of this print. And it'll be in our catalog. If she actually, if she gets good uh, work today, we may have a photograph tonight. She's already got the paper ready for her first batch. We knew already now that we're good to go on this. So this may be open in our catalog in a few days. And we're certainly going to feature it in our next, uh, our next uh, promo email, which is going out November the 10th or something. Okay, mixed, 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 mixed. Okay, here we go. Oh, pull out, push in. Pull out, push in. Pull out, push in. What's all the noise outside? What's all the noise? Sucks as waking up. I don't know the ninja boys are there. Over the weekend, it was insane. I think I say the same thing to you every Monday morning or something. My God, over the weekend, it hasn't been like this for three years, and it is. It's still building up crowds and crowds and crowds. And yesterday, 
There was times I went up to grab my lunch and I could not actually walk down the street. I had to dodge and dodge and dodge and dodge. People are standing around, people are walking this way, people are walking that way. I could not walk down the street straight here to the 7-Eleven to grab my sandwich. It was really, really, really busy. And even now on a Monday morning, you've seen all the people, this is not usual for a Monday morning. So Asakusa is back. Absolutely, a suck size back. And there's a reasonable amount of foreigners. Our shop is still very quiet. Sales yesterday was, I don't know, about half of what we need. We need 100,000 a day just to break even. And we've been running about, I don't know, 50,000 a day. It's up and down, up and down, up and down. Some days we're double what we need. But average, I think of our average is about 50,000 per day, about half of what we need. Okay, let's do some clearing. It's the same job as you just saw me do on the other block. Crowds hopefully not approaching, yeah, Korean levels, yes. That was, a, of course, a stunningly awful tragedy over there, but uh, awful, awful. But also, too, I think everybody now knows that tragedy over there in Korea, it could be, when you think about it, this could be the last time something like that happens because... Uh, this is no obvious inside of mine. Everybody at the moment immediately understands how we can do that. All those people had a phone, and they were all connected to their ISP. And obviously, such a system is not in place now. But after that tragedy on the weekend, we can all imagine how this is going to work. The ISPs, which were the cell towers, can easily tell when the numbers of phones congregating in some idea are getting to be dangerous levels. They also know there's many, many phones walking towards this area. So the technology is there right now to warn that this kind of situation is developing. And you could, whatever, the, the, the ISPs with their things, they could warn the police or they could warn each phone, please be careful, the crush is developing, turn around and walk the other way, get out of there. Everybody's got a phone. Every one of those people had a phone in their pocket. So I think an uh, awful tragedy, but this will be the key to the development of new software now that will stop this from happening. This is obviously a no-brainer. I'm sure th there's many, many people already starting this, you know, because we have the technology to stop this from happening. But my God, they're all so young. <laughs> I don't want to think about it. I'm sorry. I have no insight into this. You know. But the technology is there now to stop this. It, all it has to be is has to be implemented, the right software. And I guess it's going to come from the cell towers, the, the internet service providers. And that could be implemented like right now, instantly. We don't need to think about this for future. That, that kind of software could be implemented like today. I took the tape off a bit too soon, maybe too much.
Miss Sweater, yes, present from Jed. Jed Henry sent it to me a few years back. So. Uh, something else we have to show today something really really important I have to show today we've got our show-and-tell but tell you what when it gets to be show-and-tell time maybe five minutes before show-and-tell remind me there's something else I have to open up and show you I've been waiting for it for weeks and weeks and weeks it's late but it is here it arrived today so remind me it's gonna be a busy show-and-tell today Don't I want to show some of the hooks I work from next year to honor his birthday? No. I don't know. Thank you for the suggestion. That's kind of cool. Oh, Ayano san is here. My God, everything's happening all at once. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Pardon me? Oh, it's been it's been a bit of a of a, of a, of a, a it's a ditzy it's been a ditzy I you know stream today. So I mean I know I, I've been here. <laughs> Whatever. I'll talk to you about it later. We're busy today. The show. We're busy. We're busy. We're busy. So I mean, we totally forgot that you have a Twitch stream. Yeah, I know. So when we were making that plan, so <laughs> so you have to leave at nine thirty. Whatever, whatever. All I can say, you know. Okay. And it, it could be really quite busy over there this morning. We're gonna make plan A, plan B. So you know, I'm not sure the best time to go. Mm -hmm. The morning would be the busiest because other people are gonna go there as well today. It's not just us. Mm. What would be a good? Well, anyway, we're, I get a, yeah, get a stream okay. right now, but let's let's think about that. So Hi. come say hello. Oh, hey, everybody. This is Ayano San coming in for work on Monday. Too. I went to this uh, book festival yesterday, uh, held in Jinbocho. Kind of it's like a second-hand like book, like an old book. Oh, Kosho Masuri, right? so, 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 so. I bought a print, which is, I think, very beautiful. I'm quite happy with it. <laughs> for us or for yourself? Oh, for myself. Oh, <laughs> I think it's good. Hunting <laughs> for stuff for us, you know, so, 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 so. so. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I just wanted to Special show and tell, whatever, <laughs> unexpected show yeah, and tell. Okay. We were half speaking Japanese. Kosho Matsuri is old book festival, and the Jimbocho Book District does this at least once a year, sometimes twice a year. And this is Bunkano Aki. So the end of October, beginning of November is one of the times when they do this. And the bookstores all in a row down there put stalls outside. And a few of the stores, Yamada Shoten, Harashobo, they sell prints. So they must have had something in the stalls outside. What about prints? Sorry, okay. Sorry, sorry. What have you got? Well, not the print. You've got the. Okay. I didn't bring it. Okay, so actually, we have this. <laughs> I know. I she, know. She got it's a, like a yeah. <laughs> it's a Kiyonaga print. It's actually so part of a. Have it? Like so, so. I know. I think set so. Of two, isn't it? It's part of a diptych. So, so, yes, yeah, so, set so, of two. So, 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 so. I thought someone was looking for this print. Actually, I don't know. No? It's made by you know. Uh, yeah, no, no, no. But I mean, it's made by. Uh, oh, I forget the name of the company. I know. Yamada Showing. You want to show it? 1965, 1970, somewhere around there. She's got a nice one. Nice one. So, 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 so. They're all saying hello, Aino san, hello, Aino san. Hi, hi, hi. So, that's a new set, different from, you know, my medical. She's becoming a print collector. Look at this. We've caught, we've caught one more. The octopus tentacles go out. We've caught one more. I wasn't going to buy anything because all I saw was like, Mostly, mm. like, you know, Nobody can see you. You're hidden behind the camera here. So, 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 so. Yeah, but, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I, I, I did something different from, you know, getting yeah. like a fancy It's because of this thing, they show whatever it is. So, 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 so. No, I'm getting better this Okay, uh, hi. Right. good, good, good. And then, this is a just a reminder. I'll be off on Friday. And then Thursday is the national holiday. So, so she's going to be gone for four days. If you're placing an order Wednesday night, good luck. <laughs> so, okay. Aomori. 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 Skiing? No, it's just like skiing. Onsen? Onsen to Onsen. Ato, uh, nani, hiking. Okay, to okay. Canoeing. Up there? So this really? At this season? It's going to be cool. I know. I know. It's okay. Okay, okay, okay. Well, okay. it's not okay, but I will, I'll be okay. All right, so check the next Monday when we sp see her, you'll be back here Monday morning. She will have had a four day long weekend canoeing up in the talk. So, lots of questions. Save your questions. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, see you later. Sorry. No, no problem, no problem. It must be nice, you know. There's a holiday on Thursday. She scheduled one of her own. You know, everybody gets 10 days off per year. All the people who are salarymen, salarymen, sal she's a salaryman, whatever, that's an expression. 
So she's combining her own holidays with the national holiday. So Thursday's a national holiday, Friday she's off. Must be nice to be able to do this, you know. It's nice to have a company though where they can do that, but there is a, the other side of it. I'm going to have to do the work for her for the time she's off. So. Hoi, 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 hoi. Okay, let's get to work. What is it? Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. It must be nice to have that sort of thing, you know, have a job where you can have your days off and plan a trip with your friends. And must be nice. see what's going on. I'm sorry if I'm on screen or off screen or, or what. I'm sorry. Uh, so the 10 days off, the, the typical work contract, she's in her first year of employment here. So the typical standardized work contract, the, the rules are set by the, what is it, the Labor Standards Bureau or something. And a person who is hired as a full-time worker on a contract, as long as they're doing more than, I think it's more than 30 hours a week, don't quote me, it's something like this. As long as they're over 30 hours a week, then the employer is legally obligated to give them 10 days holiday per year. I mean, they're on a five-day week. It's usually Monday to Friday. They're off Saturdays and Sundays. They're off national holidays, which uh, there's about 12 of those per year. But then the contract must include, after they've been with the company six months as a test period, they then get... 10 holidays per year. A typical Toyota type country company, they're in there but very few workers actually take them. The culture here says you can't do this. You're going to make too much stress for the guy in the desk next to you who has to take care of your job while you're away. So very, very, very few salaried employees here actually take their time. We are mandating that they do take it but please don't take it all at once. Or if you want to take it all at once, let's talk about it in advance and try and work out how to make it work. So she is now, she's been here more than six months, so she has, over the next 12 months, she has 10 days coming to her, and she is managing it herself. There's no, she doesn't come to me and ask me for permission, you know, we've got no uh, HR department. She manages it herself, as does Watanabe-san. And she's doing it sensibly, you know, she did this, this week, there's a national holiday on Thursday, which I actually hadn't known about. And she's combining that with one of her days off. So, so I myself then, I'll have to switch to doing orders then, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday and Sunday. I'll have to do the, I'll have to handle the online orders. And one reason why she's doing this this week is because next week, and it will go probably November the 8th or November 9th or 10th, something. We don't know what day yet. We will be launching our next, uh, our autumn campaign. And Watanabe-san has been working for months to get prints ready. And we have another flea market Matsuri coming uh, in two weeks from now, about, about November the 8th or so. And there will be a massive, massive flood of orders coming in from that. So whoever's on the order desk that week, and that will be her. She will be back from her holidays. Is the modern generation more proactive in using them? Well, you're asking things that I don't really know. I've never been inside a major Japanese company. There is, of course, a modern move to the thing that people should take their maternity leave, they should take their paternity leave, they should take their holidays. So yes, there's very much a mood in the country that people should no longer be slaves to the corporations. There, there's a mood there. But how much of that actually works in practice when you're working for SoftBank or Toyota or whatever, I don't know how it's working out on the ground. I really don't know. You'd have to speak to somebody with experience inside a corporation. Well, this Thursday is culture day. Yeah, okay, okay, that's right. Someone's asking, is it Christmas order season already? We're two months into Christmas order season. We started that in the beginning of, end of September. The gift print season is up and running. It's been up and running for weeks. If you haven't thought about it yet, 
Do you not get our emails that go out every six weeks or so? Careful of sharing too many details on the holiday plans of your employees with a public audience. I guess uh, I get that, I guess, but actually she stood here and told us her plans <laughs> so herself, so uh, I don't know if there's any specific problem with that. But uh, Someone was asking about uh, the Hoxai project for next year. You know, it's, it's sort of a non-secret now that next year's subscription series is going to be based on some Hoxai designs. And uh, somebody a few minutes ago said, okay, let's talk about it, let's do this. And I'm going to demur on that because of something that happened the other day. Um, today is Monday, and I didn't get a chance to go to the pool today because today it's the last day of the month, and our fitness center is closed for deep cleaning on the last day of every month. This is there's still we're still a, vi a virus, you know, a pandemic situation. So the fitness center is closed for cleaning. But I was there Friday, and I knew that Friday was my last day for swimming for a few days. I had a really enjoyable, nice long swim. There's no stream on Fridays, so I can stay at the fitness center for a long time. So I stayed in there in the water and swimming back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and you know when you're swimming it's just you in the bottom of the pool the, the red line at the bottom of the line you know there's nothing to think about so it turned out I, I was mulling things over and I was thinking about next year's subscription series and we've had a problem developing with next year's subscription series in that it's a project that requires a great deal of delicate carving but because they're monotone prints they don't require a lot of printing and I have had trouble trying to balance the next year's project. I want to do the project that we've been proposing, the Hokusai pro project, and we've got the carving lined up for it, but all of a sudden I have four printers upstairs who would have really nothing to do for most of the year. Now it's not completely nothing to do, there, there are other blocks and other things around here, but 
no major scheduled set of prints. So I've been trying to work out how to get around this problem. I want to do that Hoxai book project, but how do I also keep my printers busy? While I was swimming on Friday, I got it. I got it. So I was chatting with some of the people on Friday, and I'm going to hit Ayamasan it again with this today. I've unilaterally made some major dramatic changes in next year's subscription series. So anything that I've teased to you so far, take with a grain of salt, because I've flipped it all upside down. <laughs> so, so next year's subscription series is actually, it's going to be a bit different from what we've been talking about. I've had to put the, the things together in a different way. Anyway, that's nothing to do with this. The, the show and tell is here, but before we do the show and tell, one quick package to open. This is arriving here from, this is arriving, oh, well, too many cameras in the way. Pull out, push in. This is arriving from our printer, how's your Japanese? It's arriving from our printer, Kawai Chiharu-san in Nagano. Any guesses to what it is, this size? Who's gonna be the first one up? What is it, what's inside? John Becker is close. Oh, there's no basket. It's waves. Waves, waves, waves. It's waves. Not octopuses. No, it's waves, the actual waves, not a block. It's prints. It's been so long since we've seen any. <laughs> Finally, some more waves. Finally, some more waves. Actually, it's not all that finely. There was another batch about six weeks ago. I don't show them all to you, you know. We do have batches of waves coming in and going out all the time. The last previous two batches were done by Sugesan here in at Mokohankam. I mean, here in the building. The blocks are hanging in there, and we will now discover in one minute What's the current status of the blocks? How are the prints looking? They come in waves. Someone's asking, do I find my swimming time to be a good time for personal reflection? Not really, no. It's mostly <gasps> gasp, gasp, 36, 37, 38, and I'm watching the lady next to me. It's very seldom that I get one lane to myself. <clears throat> so there's two of us in the lane and sometimes three of us in the lane. I gotta be careful. I still am dripping red from this finger. If I get that all over these prints, I am gonna be in big trouble. So in fact, let me take a bit of insurance here. Let me take a bit of insurance. I don't have any band-aids, so I'm sticking some double-sided tape on my finger. <laughs> Excuse me. Whatever. That should do it. The flask is just suspended, so when I hit it, it keeps moving. Upside down. She's printed them all upside down. Oh.
and she forgot the embossing. Chiharu-san, you forgot the embossing. They look great. We're well over, well over, well over 2,000 copies. These look great. Look at this. I cannot believe this. More than 2,000 copies from this block. I didn't even know, 2,400 copies. Look at this, the calligraphy is sharp and clear. The top line of the wave, the fingers of the wave. Look at this, the little guys here. We are well over 2,000 copies. It can be done. This myth, wood blocks only last about 200 copies and after that they're no good. Bull feathers, bull feathers, you can do it. Good hard wood don't print too many copies at the same time. We max at 60. An old-fashioned printer would say, 60, I'm just getting warmed up. Let me go, let me go. No, we max at 60. It's really troublesome from the printer. Get your pigment ready, get your blocks, get the block warmed up, get it going. You just get started. Stop, please. 60, that's enough. It's really troublesome for the printer. But the result is the block stays hard. It doesn't get worn out. Then give it a rest for five weeks, six weeks, come back and do it again. I'm starting to think that this block is just going to be infinite. If we treat it that way, it can't be infinite. But my God, my God. And we've documented this and we have copies all the way along of every single batch. Chihara-san, thank you, thank you, thank you. There's 60 people out there who are going to be super, super happy. Dave is just missing one thing. She didn't do the embossing. So I could have done that over the past one hour here. I am a very, very happy camper. Very happy camper. At this point, I'm thinking we should just you know, double the price. I'm not going to do this, but half of me says, Dave, double the price. We have now the waiting list. Can I tell you? I don't know. I probably shouldn't do this. I probably shouldn't do this. Let me go to my database. Database, here we are. Okay, server, pair networks, great wave, here we are, here we are. The great wave waiting list, I haven't seen this. They go in automatically. Five thousand two hundred and sixty nine people want this print. Five thousand two hundred and sixty nine people. What can I say? I'm sorry. What can I say? What can I say? Carve another block set. John San is waiting. We have a piece of wood. We have the tracing. John San is waiting. All those 5,000 people, will they be happy with not the one I carved, with Mokhankan's second version? I don't know. I don't know what to do. The accountants have the easy answer. The bean counters have the answer. You've got 5,000 people waiting. Here's 60 prints. Put them on auction. Let them bid what they want. I can't do that. I really, really, really can't do that. I'm an idiot, but I can't do that. Let the market dictate the price. I can't do that. I'm an idiot. I could retire. Freaking, I could retire. I'm an idiot. I can't do that. Let's not talk about it. Show and tell. This is fun. Am I still getting drop-offs of non-purchases compared to what I have previously mentioned? Yes. She is going to send out today. She will send out later this afternoon. Oh, well, after I've checked these prints, I don't know how many. There's a nice one on top. Maybe the 59 are junk. I don't think so. After I've counted them, I will give Ayanas an account, and she will go to our mailing list, and she will send out, say, 50 emails to the top 50 people on that list. Some of those people will be died by now. <laughs> Some it will go into their spam folder, they won't see it. 
and some will say, well, I wanted it a few years ago, but I don't have any money now. I've lost my job. I don't want it. So she will not get 50 orders. She will get, I don't know, 25 orders or something. We wait a few days and then we send out 25 more emails. So over the next few days, the emails will go out and out and out. The next version, Chongtan is going to carve it. He's already hip for it. We've got the piece of wood ready. We've got the tracing ready. All we need is resources, time. Okay, what we have here are two wood block prints. I, I, I put a link earlier in the stream to Jacques Commandeur's website. Can somebody pop it up again, please? Or maybe. I've got it here. Let me pop it up again. It's in a, where are we? Page option. Here. There it is. There it is. Here's the print. What we have here today are two prints from the Meiji era. I'm not exactly sure what date they are. All, all I can guess is maybe it's around 1900 or something like that. Might be 1895, might be 1905. I don't know. I don't know the date. Jock's page has them here. There was a bunch of prints published by a god, a god called Akiyama Buemo. He was a publisher at that time in Meiji and whatever, he is one of the human beings on this planet that Dave thinks of as a god. The things he caused to come into being are magnificent, magnificent creations. There are a half a dozen or so albums created in the Meiji era, all sets of 12 prints, all depicting uh, women and family life of an upper class kind of group of people in the Meiji time. This is from one such album. If you look on that page, let me, let me find the uh, link here. This is Terukata is the designer's name. And this is one print from the album called Senshu no Hana. I won't paste into the stream here. Senshu no Hana. This is Ikeda Terukata. We have on this auction two of the prints from the album. Let me try and get in close. Pull out, push in. I may have to readjust my focus here. They are stunningly, stunningly, beautifully made. The black lines of her kimono are done in embossing. I'm going to try and find the light. The carving is full of kasure. It is full of delicate detail. The whole mood is quiet and shibui and delicate. There's the man's name, Akiyama Buemon. We have a date here. Let me get, get a second if I can get a date. Stand by. It's Meiji 34. So if someone can give us the date there. Meiji 34 is the date. The prints are full of open white space. Everything is balanced beautifully. Every line and dot is alive. It's a type of carving that came in to, to, to start during the Meiji era. The carving you see here wasn't common during the Edo time. They carved sharp, clear lines. By the time we got to Meiji, they were now trying to do a semi-realistic approach with this. And what you're seeing is a woodblock print. They're all carved the same way, but the carving, the shapes are carved and then roughed up to give an effect of texture. Gradation on the bamboo. Look at this. The printer has gone here. Gradation number one, gradation number two, gradation number three. Up on the next piece of bamboo. One, two, three. One, two, three. The time and trouble they took on these things is beyond belief. Beyond, beyond belief. I've only got a couple of these albums. Jacques there, you see on his website, he has a bunch of these albums. And they are an absolute treasure of humanity.
What was the date? Meiji 34? Did someone pop it in? It says somebody's put published in Meiji 30. The print I just looked at, let me look at another one here, make sure I'm not getting this wrong. Or maybe, yeah, these are post editions. Maybe these were published later after the original book. Oh, Ken, good morning, good morning, good morning. Let me check again with the date. Hang on. Oh, Aimi san. Aimi san is here. Eto ne. Aimi san is here. She wants her blog. Ah, soka. Matsushima de show. She wants her Matsushima blog. Just a minute. Eto ne. Ah, kore show. あ、いたぼかしましてまた。あ、いたぼかししたんですね。いたぼかしした。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。
I shouldn't laugh. I'm sorry. What can I say? What can I say? Okay, it's 9.30. We have a massively full schedule today. We've got a shop to run. Ken, who's here in the shop today, can't run this by himself yet. He and I will be doing it together. But I've also got to get over to Hook Size Grave to do the filming we need to do today. And we have all the weekend's work to catch up on. So I am one busy little camper right now. I've also got to emboss Chiharu Sun's prints. Things are what they are. Thanks very much. Thanks for your support, guys. I will be back three days from now. Thursday morning, Tokyo time, Wednesday afternoon for many of you. It looks like a dark day out there. It's not. It's a beautiful, beautiful sunny day. You're just catching a particular time of day when the sun doesn't shine on our side of the street here. Thanks again. Thanks to the mods for helping me with this. And uh, I'll see you all again in a few days. Thank you very much. Bye for now. <laughs>